So are you guys ready? Well, you're gonna hear this in the background. I've got another 1.5 liter EcoBoost uh, to rebuild. But this is the new kit. You got your front and back pads, passenger and uh, driver. There's the harness for the passenger side. Here's your accessory hot ground switch relay and your plugins for the top and bottom where they meet so the first step to this is going to be getting the driver's seat out of the car now some might say you need to unplug the negative battery cable i'm not going to do that i'm going to pull this seat out of here take the plastic caps off the bottom now you might play hell with those bolts that go through the floor uh, those bolts rust up in there real good. You may have to soak them for a few days and it may not go as well as you plan. Me, I've got a few tricks up my sleeve. Uh, let's see if I can get them off. I may have to soak them and I may not even be able to get to this job tonight. But I'm going to keep you updated. And I'm going to pull the seat out now. Alright, so far I've pulled the caps off here. You can see this is a metal push tab. It just pries right off the back right here. That one is missing. I did not actually realize that. The front. Has push tabs on the side. You push and you push in. You pop these off. I thought they were more rusty than what they were. They're actually not that rusty at all. Another set of push tabs right there on the side. You push that tab in. Slides right off. Now... I go to the back here. It looks like a 13 millimeter there. That looks pretty big, like an 18 or 19 millimeter on that seat belt. So I'm gonna work on pulling the 13s out front and back and then figure out what that is next. Of course, what I thought would happen did happen. It's just full of too much rust. Both of the fronts broke, so I'm gonna have to drill and tap those. That's no problem, I've got the tools to do that. But now I'm going to move on to the back. No worries. Okay, so the back is off. Um, I pulled the bolt out here. Now there's two ways you can do this. I also unplugged the seat connector. Be careful because there's a tab top and bottom of this connector that looks like it connects, but only one of them actually does. So make sure you grab the right one. It's just plugged right up underneath the seat. You can tilt this up. And you can pull this locking tab off the side of the seat belt buckle right here and slide it out or you can take the whole thing with the seat I'm pretty sure but we're gonna find out right now yeah but I'll take the whole thing with it if uh, if it just makes it easier so let me do that now I'm gonna pull the seat out okay it's out the tools that I've used so far is a 13 millimeter socket, a 19, no 18 millimeter socket, um, a little flat tiny screwdriver to pick the plastic off of the mounting spots, and my uh, Milwaukee M12 brushless impact. So uh, yeah, I got the seat out over here go ahead and look at how we're going to start taking it apart. Drop it like flies. So the first thing I did was I pulled off the back flap here. And if you wanted to cheat, you really could. You can actually stick your hand all the way back in there. You could even restuff that without pulling the whole entire seat apart. Slide a new piece of foam right underneath that. No big deal. And then you could work your way around here. What is this? And roll this all. Assist all channeling that just goes right over it. Let me do that real quick. Let me see. Okay, all I did was just fold this. It's really tough to fold this stuff back. So just be very, very careful not to hurt yourself. But it's got a lip. And as you roll this in here, mm -hmm. 
as you roll it in, it's going to snap over the edge. So be careful. I unfolded that and it's kind of really tight. And then I just unfold it all the way around. Now I'm going to flip the seat track. I'm going to flip the seat back up on its bottom and try to just peel the leather back out of the way and see how I want to lay this. All right, I had to reach under there and unplug my lumbar support. It comes up and plugs in right there and it goes in between the crack of this foam. So I pulled a few of the hog rings out along the front, the side, and one in the corner. Enough for me to start to slide the material in there and kind of figure out where I want it. Now there is a channel right here, a blank channel in between, that what I'll do is I'll actually feed that hog ring through that channel. I'll feed it through this bottom part first where this, this rod is built into the foam is. And I'll, I'll hook it like I'm sewing up over it and then try to pull this down into it and hook it up over the top of that. I'm gonna see how that works. I'm gonna try that out real quick. Okay, there I put the hog ring back in. It's kind of hard to see, but I fished it through the bottom part and then back up over the top and I'm gonna try to squeeze the tips together and I'm gonna continue working my way across this until I get it all put back in. And then once I get it pulled back in, I'll pull the straps back and try to seal everything down. Okay, I put these three hog ring or these two hog rings back in where they go because I could center it in that open slot that's in these. There's like an opening right in here. This one I had to move over a little bit and repoke, but it's down. I am going to work on getting one more hog ring right here in the front and then I'm going to strap this back down basically how I did it is I fed this through the center and you can see my connector right here so the pad goes from the front to the back okay this pad is all put back together on the bottom now, got to do the back. So this part right here, I flipped it back up again. Um, this locks in. You got to fold it up out of the way. It locks into this here. And then there's another lock underneath. And then it also unlocks around the sides as well. Let me do that with two hands. So there's the lumbar. It just basically moves this up and down to push out. And it's operated off this motor in this bracket right here. Anchors in all the way up at the top. pretty simple system won't be too hard troubleshooting that because remember this seat my lumbar doesn't work so I got to figure out is it a switch or is it a connection problem that'll be next but let me get these heated seats done all right I'm gonna go ahead and finish unwrapping this enough to where I could at least get that pad set in let me go ahead and figure out how I'm gonna pull all this up out of the way now this is too long for my seat back if I had this whole piece in here for my seat back, I'll show you where it would where it would be. It'd be from the bottom here all the way up to my shoulders, and it says that you they don't want you crossing this groove right here on the seat back. But it also shows in the picture that you're able to trim it down. If you look at that picture right there, it makes a mark at the groove, and then it shows you're able to trim it. So. I'm going to give it, I'm going to trim it and see what happens. I know there's a wire here, but I think you can cut that wire. It's on this side. I don't see nothing passing through, so I'm not sure how they're running this grid. 
somehow it all comes back to ground on this side anyway i'm gonna cut it real quick so i can confirm it is uh legit uh it's a copper strip on each side that's connecting that so when you cut it to trim it wherever you want it that's where it stays uh it's connected on every single strand so yeah that's how it is now i crinkled up these two corners pulled back and i'm gonna slide it up underneath that all the way to those hog rings right here i'm gonna see if i can get it to stay now it did indeed work i was able to reach up in there and pull those strips right back out and put it exactly where it goes i'll run this wire back through the back pull everything back through and tighten her down So I got the back sides and stuff put together. Now I need to flip it up some and finish putting the bottom right here together. <clears throat> okay, I have both my connectors coming out. Uh, what would be the left side by the door. Um, I brought them both out this way and that's where they're gonna stay. And basically now I'll work on getting the holes drilled out in the floor and <clears throat> when I get the hole drill out on the floor, maybe I should install the seat first, get the seat working, and then do the, the holes. Now I got to do the holes first. Let me do the holes first, and then I'll go back to running the wires for the seat. So let me explain to you how I've done this so far. As, uh... I mean, it's all the way through. see the light I stepped it out I went with a 332nd pilot hole to start and I went like almost the length of the drill bit this little small one right here I went about right here through the bolt and then I stepped it up to a 532nd drill bit and these are a special set of drill bits. These are cobalt drill bits. This kit cost me about four, $400, $450. Lifetime warranty on all bits. And it's a cobalt grade drill bit. And step set from Mac Tools. Now it just chews right through these bolts like nothing. I got a new set of bolts to go in there, but I may have to tap everything. So now I'm going to step over here to this other one in a second, but I'm going to finish getting this on out of here. I probably only have about two minutes, three minutes total in this. That's it. I have officially stepped it out to a 316. Still doesn't want to come out. So I'm going to go next one up, which is a 516. No. Next one up is 1364. So I'm going to step it up to that next. Okay, I uh, found a set of suspension bolts that uh, I had left over in my red box, my parts box, and I actually found a lock nut to meet it too, and I mean, they drop right in there. I had to drill it out to 25 64 to get all the rusty threads and everything out of there, but I mean, they're nice and snug going in, but they do go in, and I'm going with it. Okay, I've got all the bolts and covers in, and now I've ran my harness down here kind of on the side. And what I'm planning on doing is I'm planning on pulling it up right here so as the seat moves, the harness can move with it, and it'll stay down there. Uh, and I might put just a little slit in here, or just run it right up underneath it. So as it moves back and forth, it's got plenty of room to move. And uh, I'll situate this down here once I get everything ran. And I'm going to run this right up underneath the dash right here, and I'm going to find a power source and tap into it on the power side of one of the fuses here that's only key on on the power side not the through side so if it does have a, a mishap it'll pop the fuse for the heating element itself and not try to go through the other side of the fuse um, in the little box down here so let me see what I can come up with I, I gotta play around with this I'm probably gonna do it wrong but let me see I've got a good ground source right here that I'm going to tap into. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring this up underneath the carpet after I get everything set. And I've got the seat as far back as it'll go. I've run the harness along the side. I'm going to go ahead and zip tie it in the location right here. And then I'm going to retake everything off, run the wires back up underneath the carpet, pull it up through there, and then go back. So then you don't see anything here. Uh, but I'm going to do that after everything's mocked up. But I got it as I have it running along this channel. And then I have the relay tucked over in here behind the carpet. And then most of the wires with the other factory wires back here. I'm going to zip tie that to the harness. And then in this plastic right here, I'm going to make the hole for the seat switch. Just roll with it. The fuse I went to was the supply side of this 10 amp fuse right here. I'll figure that out what that is in a second but I'm not too concerned with that right now I went to the supply side not the other side so that circuit is not affected by what I did here well I just fired it up green light is on low right now Really getting hot so low it had the seat right at about 70 degrees getting warm I can already feel it It's nice. Just leaving it on and trying to feel for temperature, you got to put your butt on it. And once you put your butt on it, wow, it feels really good. It's warm all the way to the front, and it's warm all the way up to the bottom of my shoulder blades. That's nice. Now, if I was to stuff it more and push that element up into the leather more, uh, it would definitely react way quicker. Uh, I feel the nice warm sensation down the small of my back all the way up to my shoulder blades. I feel my butt warm all the way down to almost the back of my knees from where very, very, very nice. All right, I'm going to finish putting it together. So I made my hole. One of the wires doesn't come out of the kit. It stays in. Now I'm going to mount everything. Well, there it is. I'm gonna have to make the hole just a little bit bigger so I can close that up and seal it back in there and then turn the switch just a tad bit. But it's all ran. I put a little relief hole right here in the side of the box so I can run the power wire out of it. Got the fuse right there where it can't be seen. Ground is down here. Everything is run back this way. I'm gonna notch this right here and then tie everything up to the seat. It's nice, the heated seat works really good. So if you look down there in the corner, you see the red light, that means it's on high. And if I reach down here and I switch the button, low is green. Let's put it back on high for right now. So I got it on high. And what you, what you want to do is you want to make sure when you key off, I'm going to turn the key off right now. It's only on accessory supply. So you see the light went off. Even if I forget, it automatically shuts the circuit down. That's why I went to the supply side of that fuse. Because it's gonna, always going to have power there. It's always going to have enough to supply a 10 amp fuse. So what I did was I ran off that leg. So that fuse can still work its circuit, and if something happens in that circuit, I'll still have power, and if something happens in my circuit, the fuse that's in 
line with what I put in here will pop and it won't pop that fuse. So I'm always getting just a source voltage supply only when the key is on. So I can just leave it on if I really need to and it's freezing out. This is nice. I just measured it, it was at like uh, 94 degrees and that was just running it for four minutes. Now I'm sitting in it, I'm gonna see what it feels like, you know, when I get home, it's really warm right now, it's very, very nice. I'm glad I did this. I didn't have time to clean up, so I apologize, but uh, yeah, I love this. I love the heated seats. I ran it all the way to the back of my knees so that heating pad goes all the way to the end. And then right here, I feel it right at the bottom of my shoulder blades. Definitely 